As I continue on my journey of trying to shoot every film stock that there is, this week I had my first proper black and white experience in the form of Ilford's 50 ISO Pan F Plus. And I say proper black and white because, well, I have shot XP2 before, but because it's C41 process, to me, it's kind of its own thing. It's not proper black and white. And if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you may remember that back when I started shooting film, I had a go at a single roll of TMAX 3200, but I don't count that because I really had no idea what I was doing back then. So with Pan F Plus being my first proper black and white experience, when I first loaded the rolls, I really had no idea of what to expect and no frame of reference to base my opinions on when I got my scans back. And whilst that's something that I usually find exciting about making these videos getting to learn more and broaden my horizons with film. With this one, with my lack of experience, I really felt like I was coming in blind and I, I think I still am. And that's not really gonna change until I've shot a bunch of different black and white stocks. I feel kind of lost without that reference point. But yeah, as for now, all I know is that I took some pictures that I quite like and I have opinions on. So let's take a look at them. I don't always shoot Ilford Pan F, but when I do, it's with an, a Leica. I love how there's little drawings here on these Leica cameras, just in case they forget. I shot the first two rolls in Brisbane around the city using my friend Ryan's Leica M6 and Hasselblad 500 CM, which he was so generous to let me have a go at. They are very nice cameras. The reason I decided to shoot these first two rolls in Brisbane was to get some nice architectural shots. Because after all, Ilford themselves say that this film is best suited to shooting architecture, still life, fashion and portrait photography. Which when you think about it for half a second makes total sense. Because obviously you wouldn't want to shoot any fast sports or action photography on this film. What you want is precise control over your subject or at least the knowledge that it won't move like a bridge. A bridge won't move. Three, two. To reiterate, it is a 50 ISO film. And that's really the defining factor of Pan F+. That box speed greatly affects the shooting experience and the relationship that you have with light. And it also gives you a very fine grain that I think is aptly suited to scanning. And on top of that, I think it's got quite a nice look to it. Obviously, with achieving a look, it depends on how you shoot, how you develop and how you scan. But if you do all of those things in the standard way, it's a very high contrast look, which I usually don't like. But in this particular case, because of those smooth turn sliding from the brightest whites all the way down to the darkest blacks. It makes a very appealing image that isn't too dramatic, but it's still got a punch. From there, with one roll left and having seen all these images scanned already, I decided that I'd go to the built up part of the Gold Coast to try and shoot some similar images again, but this time at a later time in the afternoon with longer shadows and trying to get as much direct sunlight as I could. I chose to shoot this roll on my Minolta SRT 101 just to get a little bit extra light. My fastest lens is on that camera at f1.4 and the conditions were everything I had hoped for up until the clouds rolled in. And this is where I accidentally began test shooting a little bit underexposed, but still developed normally. But even so, the results were quite nice. I do like soft lighting. And for most of this video, I had been shooting indirect or almost direct harsh light. And I finally had a moment in my comfort zone with a camera that I knew better as well, because the Leica M6 and Hasselblad 500CM was fun to shoot with, and they are brilliant cameras, but those were my first times using those cameras. I think I've run out of light. It's the blue hour now, and I think I'm now realizing that uh, 50 ISO is very low. You very quickly run out of light, and unfortunately, it's just clouds everywhere. 
which means I, I, just, I just can't shoot anymore unless I'm looking directly at the sky. So the clouds from yesterday have since turned into rainy clouds. So it's, it's raining today, hence the big raincoat. And that means I'm not gonna bring this camera out with me. I'm just gonna have my trusty little Minolta because I can manage not getting one camera wet. But if I've got two cameras with me, one of them is gonna get wet and that's just not a situation I wanna deal with. There's enough light because it is around about the middle of the day. Um, despite all the cloud cover. So I'm gonna go and get my pictures. the previous day shooting when there was cloud cover I ended up with these much softer images but still with that crunchy black and that tonal range which made for a very nice look I really thought that my favorite shots would be the medium format shots but they weren't they were these pictures of these power lines in the middle of a park it's a lovely film I quite like the results and I like the punchiness and the contrast I don't think it's an everyday kind of shooting film but if you want this particular look and you have enough light I think it's a great option and if I ever want a client that wants a gritty more impactful look during the day then this is the film that I'm gonna go for but for everyday shooting XP2 is the way to go I really think just because it's C41 which means you can get your film quicker the results are more consistent because it's done by a machine and it's cheaper. As ever, I recommend giving it a try yourself and seeing what you think because really my opinion is just an opinion and like I said at the start of the video, I have no ground to base my opinions on. They're just opinions. If there are any mistakes that I made that you noticed or you have any suggestions or you just want to tell me about your experience shooting Pan F Plus, please join in the conversation in the comments below. It's really fun to interact with the comments on these film videos. I'm planning to make more and more film videos. My fridge is fully stocked with some film, so get excited and subscribe if you wanna be first in line to see that. Do all the YouTube things, give this video a like if you liked it, you know. And I'll see you next week with another video.